All right, so I got a request in the comments of one of my recent videos to go over creating animations within V-Ray for Rhino. Uh, it's not something I typically do. Normally I go to 3D Studio Max, which there is a five-part tutorial series on, on my page here. Um, but I figured I'd give it a go and see what kind of results I can get. And it turns out that animating simple camera motions in Rhino is pretty easy to do. Uh, so let's cover what we have and then we'll talk about making that animation. First, this is the uh, Barcelona Pavilion. Uh, you can go check out the Barcelona Pavilion tutorials that has all this geometry in it and also the materials. Uh, because this is just kind of a test render, I haven't applied the materials to everything, but if we get on the inside here and go to rendered mode, I have the, the stone on everything, on, on the three walls, and I have glass in place. Everything else is just a diffuse white. And if you're unfamiliar with creating materials, you can check out the tutorial that I'll link right here. And it will show you how to set up these different materials. Uh, the next thing I've done, let's go back to just shaded mode, is I could put in a dome light here and uh, used an HDRI material. Again, if you're unfamiliar with HDRI lighting, uh, you can link to the tutorial here. Uh, let's go to wireframe. The third part I put in was just this uh, planar light, which is this rectangular light here. Uh, and it's just shining in from the side. I needed enough light on the interior through the glass that it illuminates the inside of the scene. But you can see here the intensity is set really, really low. It's only 0.5. And we're going to cover the reason for that in uh, the camera settings when we get to that. Uh, but let's get back to the animation and actually creating something. Uh, there's two animation toolbars we'll need. is Animation and Animation Preview. You can get those by right-clicking in the toolbar area and clicking on uh, the, the toolbars you need. So this would be Animation, and that's already clicked, but Animation Preview, and I already have those and I dragged them up in Rhino 5 here into the tabs just to keep them out of the way. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to animate our camera kind of moving through the scene. We'll look at it in top view here. What I want to have it do is just kind of have it move along a line right through there and a camera has two parts. It has a position of a camera and a target where it is looking. So I'm going to have to create another line where the target moves. So the first thing I'm going to do is here on paths I'm just going to draw a line and uh, without really snapping to anything, I'll say the I mean, camera is going to move from here to here. And, you know, I don't really want to move through this wall, so I'm going to try to turn these points on. And then I can move this point, the starting point location, in just a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is to create uh, an arc. And I want my target of my camera to pan this way, outside. It doesn't matter that it's beyond the scene. Um, actually, I forgot how arcs work, so let's do that again. This is the center point of the arc, there's the start of the arc, and there's the end of the arc. So now, all I have to do is tell my camera to snap to those two lines. Uh, one thing I want to do before that I forgot. You can see right here, these two lines are, let's look at it in plan, or in, in sec elevation here, they're all the way at the bottom of the scene. So I'm just going to move them up in the Z dimension so that they're kind of at eye level of someone walking through the space. It's going to make it more realistic. Um, so now, uh, in the animation toolbar, I'm just going to click on these animation setup tools. There's a little arrow that drops down, or you can click and hold on it. And we have, like, animate the sun, uh, 360 orbit, this one's a fly-through, but what we want is a path animation. So I'm just going to click the path animation and ask me to set my current path. Uh, I'm going to click near the start point here, and it asks me for my target path, which is this. And then it brings up a dialog box. This is how many frames do you want? I'm going to do 80. That's a really, really short animation. We can assume 30 frames a second for an animation, so this is just over 2 seconds, almost 3. Let's make it 90 seconds, just to make it 3 seconds of animation. It's pretty short. I'm going to be animating the viewport 3, which is the name of this viewport. I'm going to save it as a JPEG, uh, and then we'll compile it later. And we're going to do a full render. We're not going to do any shaded or ghosted or anything like that. We're going to, we're going to set up everything for uh, V-Ray to render everything. So then I'm going to call this uh, the BP animation, Barcelona Pavilion animation, and say OK. Uh, now we need to make sure that our V-Ray settings are set up uh, and working well. So if I open my options by clicking that tab there, 
I can just get into a little bit of the scene. Um, and if I remember here, let's go to the animation preview. I can actually preview that path here in, in viewport 3. So if I click play, it'll be very quick, but we can see what happens. Moves right through. Um, and towards the end, maybe I'm tweaking a little bit too much, so what I'm going to do is move my target path further away, which will make it much more gradual. So coming back into 3, we'll preview it again. There, I like that. Um, maybe the one last thing is to turn the points on on that, and we'll move this endpoint further in. I don't want to get as close to the wall as I was getting. Let's preview it one more time. Whoop! I moved it down, so that wasn't good. So let's see. I'll move it up here. Preview again. That looks pretty good. So this is just a wireframe. It's pretty easy for Vera to, to figure that out really quickly. So now somewhere within that, we want to make sure that the rendering looks good. And probably you'd want to test at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to load up V-Ray settings, and I'm going to use what I always use, the GI IR map medium. So say OK. Uh, output size, these are just test renderings, just to make sure that we're doing OK, that the animation is going to look nice. So I'm going to make them very small, maybe 120 pixels in height. Uh, I've, I've made sure I get my aspect ratio so it looks like the screen and I lock it. I'm going to turn on a physical camera. I'm going to turn off vignetting. I'm going to set my shutter speed incredibly low, like 7. The reason for this is the HDRI doesn't provide that much light and I have a 0.5 light that we talked about before so that's not providing much light so I want a low shutter speed to get a, lot, a high exposure so then I'll just go ahead and just do like normal and test render this one um, frame here it's going to take a second it pulls up and you can see we have kind of a bluish hue and that's coming from the skylight from the HDRI uh, and it's just I can pull over my my progress window here um, it's still pretty bright, but I think as I move on the inside, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the proper brightness on the interior. So let's give it one second to finish. And you can see, yeah, it's, it's, it's got nice shadows, and everything looks good on the inside. Um, I'm going to cancel this. We don't need to even finish that one. I can click this pound sign. This is under the Animation Preview tab. Um, and I can enter a frame to go to. So if I'm 90 seconds long, 45 frames would be in the middle. So this is the middle, and I can do a preview render here. And again, I know I can see some of the skylight, and I can tell the illumination and the interior is pretty good. Uh, I've already done a test on this to make sure I knew what I was explaining, so I know the animation is going to turn out. But if you're doing one, I, I suggest that you spend a lot of time previewing it and not letting it render for hours and hours and hours to turn out with something that isn't going to work in the end. All right, so we have that set up. I'm going to come back into my V-Ray options. If you had closed them, you can just click the O for V-Ray options. I'm going to change my output to 720, so that will be the height. Uh, we can imagine that's kind of approximately like a 720p animation. It's not quite 1080p, but we're almost there. Uh, we're going to save the render output, so I'm going to click this, and I'm going to give it a name. Uh, this is on my desktop. I made a Rhino Animations folder. And call it Rhino Animation, save, replace it. Um, the next thing I need to do is to come down into the Irridance map. Um, we have an ability to kind of work through this more quickly if we actually build one for one. So typically we would make an Irridance map on a single frame, but we can incrementally add to the current map. So what that will do is it will make it Irridance Map, and then when it has to do the second frame of the rendering, it will only add a little bit more information, which will hopefully speed everything up. So we're going to add incremental, but we have to give it a location to save that Irridance Map. So let's go in here, and then under Desktop, to BP Rendering, and this is going to be where I'm saving... Oh, you know what? I can't do that that way. I have to save the file first. So I can't load that. I'm just going to say Save My Current Map. And again, desktop, Rhino animation, this is IR map. Um, and I then can direct it to where I saved it, this map. 
So first I saved it, then I told it this is the file we're going to add to and build little by little. Obviously while we're here we don't want to delete it and we are going to auto save it. We're going to auto save it to the exact same place. So the Rhino animation, IR map, save. And we're going to replace that, that's fine. So now uh, last thing to do is to turn on auto save so it does iteratively build this IR map. Uh, and then we need to go to global switches at the top of the options here. Uh, it's going to be a batch render, so make sure that's turned on. I don't want a low priority rendering. I want to give it as much as it needs. Um, make sure everything else looks good here. That looks good. And then camera. We had already had those settings. Great. System. That's all good. We don't need to mess with anything there. So essentially it was just the batch rendering and the camera turned on. Uh, so I'm going to close this. And now, if I jump back to my Animation tab, I can click Record. If I hit the Play again, it's going to play through that. We know that's what we want. Looks good. So when I click Record, it's actually going to record the animation. It's going to render each and every single one of those frames with the settings we had just set up. So Record Animation. Uh, I want to change where it's targeted to, to be my desktop, that's fine, to the Rhino Animation. Say OK. And then all I have to do is press enter to start recording. Uh, so this is going to take quite a while. I'm going to fast forward and I will see you guys on the other side.